Wilson Morales from Black from TV. Hey, Archie, how's it going? It's good. I'm good, man. How are you? You know, you've had an incredible year with three good projects, you know, but here we're talking about Saltburn. Yes. Such a wicked, wicked film, you know. So when you got the script, what led you to say yes to taking on this project? It's interesting that the, the route into this was kind of unconventional. The, the first few auditions, meetings were just blank monologues. No idea what the set was, no idea what the story was, no idea what the characters were. All I knew was this is Emma Fennell's next project. And so we would just audition, having no idea what we were auditioning for. And then maybe it was it was meeting four when I finally got the script. I thought, after all of this, this better be good. This has been, we've been really strong about the houses here. And I read it and it just surpassed my expectations and then some. And I just thought, now comes the fight. I have to be a part of this. It just was the kind of script that you immediately visualize that goes places that you aren't expecting. I was gasping. I think I read it in one sitting. You always know that's a good sign when you read it in one sitting. And there's just something that happens in your body when you read a script that you know you want to do. I don't know what, it's hard to describe. It's like a stomach, it's like a gut feeling that you just think, I have to be a part of this. And I just felt it with this script. And eventually, eventually when Emerald, it finally happened and, Emerald texted me, I think at like three in the morning saying, please, please, please be Farley. And I said, yes, I will. I was so excited. How would you best describe Farley? Is, is he someone looking to pay attention, to want to get attention from the family? You know, which is why he's much, I want to say he's a loner, but he's just, and, and I want to say he's a hanger on her, you know, but he just loves being with his family. He's, he is not. I actually, I think it's the opposite. I think he 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 doesn't want attention from the family. He he's trying not to attract attention because he doesn't want to happen to him what happened to poor De Pamela. He doesn't want to be kicked out. I think he knows when to play them at the right times. He knows when to gossip. He knows when to kiss ass. He knows when to add to conversation. He knows when to joke. And he knows when to step back and let them be and just observe. Because if he gets found, he he doesn't want. He doesn't want what he's got taken away because it's not his. He knows, as he describes it, his hands are constantly out with the begging bowl asking for handouts. And he doesn't want a situation where he has to go back to New York and live in in, you know, his mum's kind of his mum's apartment and, you know, 189th Street, whatever it is. Like he just is, he just He's too comfortable. And so it's not necessarily he loves his family, don't get me wrong. There's like there there is still love there, especially with the cousins. And he and I think and it's, you know, every family, the makeup of every family is strange and, and specific. And it's the thing that worked for the Cattons for so many years. There is love and there is there is admiration there, but in the same breath, there is disdain for them and what they put him through and the fact that he has to he has to kind of go through life on hands and knees so to speak um and so it's it's a it's a kind of a fine balance for Farley the way he feels about the family so when they're filmed and when they're going to come out but you've had a great year so far but from this particular film what did you get from Emerald's direction direction that helps you as an actor moving forward Oh, she just filled, she filled me with so much confidence to trust instincts and choices. And she allowed that to happen because she created such a safe set. And not all sets feel that way. You don't always feel so safe and protected and respected. But what I take from that going forward is I'm able to create, put myself back in the feeling that I felt on that set and move into each project going forward in that space because I felt it, I know that it can exist. And I felt it in moments beforehand and I felt it in moments since, but I think Emerald being an actor really knows what is needed to make good work. Um, she really knows what an actor needs to feel in order to to play and be free and and, I think everybody, because she set that world up so well, was able to challenge themselves. It was it was the loveliest experience. Wicked and wild, as I may say. Congrats on the road. Congrats on the film. We'll talk down the road. Take care. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Wilson Morales from Black Me TV. Hello, Emerald. How's it going? It's so good. How are you? 
good. You know, the word to describe this movie is wicked. You know, so when you decided you wanted to put this together, obviously there are a couple of scenes that make people go, ah, you know, how far did you want to push it? <laughs> really far, as far as it'll go. You know, I don't think you make movies if you don't want people to like feel something. And so that's the thing. I think all of us were really dedicated for it to be kind of a visceral, um, physical experience as much as anything else. You know, I think of Six Degrees of Separation, the talented Mr. Ripley, there's something about people wanting to be, immerse themselves in somebody else's life. You know, what would it do doing this for you? Well, I think, you know, I was really looking at the kind of that British sort of gothic subgenre um, of the kind of country summer, the country house in the summer. So looking at like Brideshead Revisited and the go-between and atonement and the line of beauty and kind of Rebecca up to a point, that, that, that thing of, you know, an outsider kind of being lured into a world that is just like completely out of time, out of all kind of belief. And, you know, and it's even, The Great Gatsby is a great example of this too, you know. And I think that there's always going to be something delicious about kind of that sort of huge tension and conflict between kind of sex and power and class, you know, in that kind of, in a, in a sort of um, tinderbox of one place, you know, one place where everyone kind of goes mad. I think of the word you just mentioned, delicious, and each character has their own personality to an nth degree, you know, from Barry to Jacob to Rossman to Carrie to Archie, you know, when you were putting this together and you look at the characters constructing, you know, where, how much fun were you having, you know, putting these characters together and, and say, okay, this person can be a little bit of this and that person can be a little bit of that? <laughs> I mean, it's always so much fun. It's so much fun writing, you know, writing characters like this that are, you know, both abominable and completely impossible to resist. Like that's, those are the kind of characters that are, that are always the most fun to write. And then you meet the actors and you find your actors and then they make them a thousand times more duplicitous, interesting, funny, cool. You know, it's it, it's such a privilege to work with the kind of actors that are working in this movie because, you know, what you're really looking for is an understanding, you know, so everyone kind of came having read the script and they were like, I know this person, I feel this person, I can, I'm gonna get under the skin of this and that's just always so thrilling. You've now done a couple of films now, so but talent can never stop learning. What's your takeaway from having done this movie from your last movie that helps you out moving on to your next project, whatever it may be? I think, you know, it's, again, it's about, I think it's about making things that are sort of visceral and complicated and sexy. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, just wanting to push even more. You know, I just think that cinema is such a unique art form. It has the ability to do things to us that nothing else does really. And that is the thing that I'm most interested in is what can be done to someone in a dark theater when they're sitting between strangers. <laughs> Congrats on this film. As I mentioned before, wicked, delightful, enjoyable, and a pleasure. Thank you very much.